All right, Shalom, first and foremost, all praises and glories unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Harachach Wadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders and the elder bishops of Great Millstone who rule well, and greetings, salutations, blessings, and much love unto you, hopeful elect out there, Shalom. All right, your brother Shaquat here with a little video, and um, I just want to uh, go into this topic, uh, you know, I, I, you know, do these videos in hopes to um, also edify myself through the spirit of Yahweh Shai, but also uh, those that may uh, be going through similar things um, and just because it's a good um, coming down the home stretch if you will it's just a good something to remember all right just a good lesson so um, and basically is the priorities okay the priorities of this truth okay the Number one priority in this truth is, is is salvation and the ministry, okay? And so um, keeping, as, as a personal thing, keeping focused on what is important. All right, there was no particular person or anything that this is uh, influenced by. Just, just something that was on my spirit. And, um, you know, when you examine yourself daily, whether you be in the faith, this is something that, that I particularly uh, uh, consider within myself it, it are my actions and my um, my thoughts and my my uh, uh, priorities about this ministry, or is it that I'm, you know, uh, want to fulfill a personal goal or agenda that I want, you know, before before the world goes, or you know, you got to consider these things because at the foremost, it's nothing wrong if you have certain things that you uh, want to accomplish. But just be mindful that this ministry comes before anything, okay? So I'm going to go right into it, uh, Lord willing, it's edifying. Uh, Matthew 6, and I'm going to start up. Um, yeah, that was, that was a really good one. Um, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Yeah, those earthly treasures are your goals and the things that you want to accomplish and the things that you feel are fruitful, and, you know, uh, in this uh, in this life, in this world, okay? Your flesh is going to lead you to those things. Your woman may lead you to these things. Your kids may want these things. You know, and there's nothing wrong with, with upgrading and, and getting yourself and taking care of yourself. Some may even believe, yeah, if I could just get myself into this position, I could help the ministry more. That may be true, but the Most High may uh, be testing you in a, in, a, in a lower state or, or a different position to see, you know, if you're going to, um, if you're going to prosper for him in that regard. It's funny because I'm thinking about another precept here. Um, oh, bear with me. Just thinking about it, which was, you know, a lot of the parables go into, uh, that you, how I spoke, go into um, how you perceive uh, this thing here, whether it's the trimming your lamp, basically, um, you know, uh, getting oil for yourself, you know, gaining as much of this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, uh, building your faith up in this thing as you can, you know, whether it's uh, the uh, the sower, not the sower, um, the parable of uh, what's that other one? Where it says, uh, let me see if I can grab it right quick. It's like the parable of the talents. Okay. Where, where some, when you, you're given this truth, then what are you going to do with it? Are you going to, are you going to bury it and hide it within yourself? Or are you going to go out and bring other talents forth? Okay. Basically share this thing that, that, uh, uh that you may grow. Another one is, um. Uh, that the, that the ministry uh, prosper. Another one is uh, the what it says: um, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Okay, so we should also be bringing other laborers to the fold. We, we got one hundred and forty-four thousand, you know, and one third that need to hear this thing, and 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 to their belief sprouts. Okay, particularly the one hundred and forty-four thousand. All right. So anyway, going back to this, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. 
Okay, these earthly treasures, man, they can go. When this economy goes, that new house, that new car, that new job, that all that's going to go. Okay, when, when, when the economy collapses, the, the, the missiles come, all of these different things, whatever those earthly treasures are to you, those, those worldly priorities you may believe they are, they're all going to go. Okay, so, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay, so if you keep your, yeah, 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 uh, your priorities in, in on, on heavenly things, on salvation, on on this ministry, yeah, man, no one can take that from you, man. And, and then your crown is laid up for you in heaven. Okay? It says, uh, 22, the light of the body is the eye, if therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. Yeah, if your focus is on this ministry, then your every all your intentions and things that you do, your priorities are going to be on this ministry. Okay? Does that mean you can't have a good time? No, but with, with the things that we prefer, we have to make sure that they're beneficial uh, to this ministry. You know, if, say, uh, you can't be, uh, say you got to go to camp tomorrow or whatever, or even work. You don't want to be all burnt out, staying up all night, uh, uh, messing around, playing the video game, or, or just out messing with harlots in the streets or whatever. You don't want to be doing those things when you know you're going to need your energy for the next day. Okay? So just using that as an example, all right? You, the priorities of these things got to be, you know, focused on what it is. The most I know, if you read down, it says the most I know we have need of these things Okay, so he'll um, so he'll give them to us. All right, let me get this twenty fourth verse. It says, "No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other." Yeah, and so when it comes down to it, man, it seems like I have no, the Most High has no problem showing me, um, to to make sure that I prefer not, you know. The, uh, or love less the things of this world, man. Okay, that this truth is, is number one priority. Okay, you got to have that tunnel vision, man. That see through all the distraction and BS. That this truth is that is that thing to be focused on. Okay, when you when you align yourself with this, hey, all the everything else in your life will fall into place as so needed. But hey, right now we're still stripping ourselves away from all the, the flesh that we're uh, involved in now. Okay, all of the, the lust of the flesh. All right? So uh, from there, let's go to... All right, so we're going to go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. And then uh, I'll start up at... Um, verse 2. Matter of fact, verse 1 says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace... That is in Hamashiach Yahushai. All right. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach those uh, others also. Okay. So we have to be abounding in this word, man, pushing it. Okay. Edifying and putting this word out there, man, giving the heat, the, the, the oppressors no rest, man. Okay. Pushing this word to where they can't ignore this truth, man. To where the Most High said it is done, and he moves on to the next stage, man. Okay, where they move on the prophets, the famine of the word, so on and so forth. It says, Thou therefore, because it seems when you look at some of these other Israelite groups, it seems like they want this life to continue. Like they're happy with this life continuing on. Okay? It's what it appears to me when you look at, you know, what they they got the Hellcats and they got the the, the you know the, the marriage counseling and they got all these other situations set up you know for people to they want to build a kingdom inside this kingdom and you know you, you see all of these situations it's like oh they don't want to get up out of here okay and we don't want to we, we don't want to have that mind state because that it pushes the wrong message for somebody that's that's weak in the faith all right it says uh uh Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Hamashiach Yahushai. And even Paul told us um, those that um, using the world but not abusing it. So you can have things of this world, but don't abuse it 
you know, to the point where it, it, it begins to take you over. Don't get caught up in this thing. Um, it said, the, if those have, why be if those they have not? Meaning this thing still has to be your number one priority. God right? says, no man war that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Uh, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Okay? So we don't have time to be focused on, on, on worldly wants. You know? The, the needs are one thing, but the worldly wants, man, we don't have time for that. Okay? What we, what we have to be focused on is, is these uh, kingdom-minded, uh, ministry-minded uh, uh, wants. Okay? And that has to be priorities. Matter of fact, I forgot to get the definition of priority. Let me let me grab it. All right, priority definition it says uh, the fact or condition of being regarded or treated as more important. Okay. In a sentence, uh, the safety of the country takes priority over any other matter. Okay, this truth takes priority over any other matter. Okay, a thing that is regarded as more important than another, uh, the right to take precedence or to proceed before others. Yeah, so you can still accomplish those other things you want, but it can't interfere with with uh, with, with this truth, man. Okay, with this ministry. Okay, one thing here in in Vegas. You know, you get here and then you, you, you see the nightlife and the lifestyle. You know, you get here and then you, you, you got to figure it out for yourself. And for me, I think I was, you know, I'd like to believe at this point I figured out a little bit of it to see what was not good for me so I could recognize when I'm into a, a bad situation, so to speak, or down leading down a road that's not uh, beneficial to the ministry and when brothers began to come into this camp because we got down to two men but when it began to grow and brothers started coming in being the head of the uh, camp we had a discussion I was like hey first thing I got to make sure I do is don't set a bad example for these men so I got to make sure that I cut out all of the other things that you know that I may want to do you know have a good time this and that that I don't put that in front of men's eyes and I don't I don't make that something that looks like it's a, a that, that you just want to be a part of, that, you know, that men begin to, to hold that in too high a regard, okay? And, it's, you know, and that that's what this is about, all right? Anyway, it says, uh, let's look at a couple of the uh, synonyms. It says, uh, preference, precedency, uh, precedence, greater importance. Yeah, and this is of greater importance because your salvation, your is hinging on this thing, okay? Um, predominance, uh, preeminence, okay? So that's good enough on that. Okay, Second Edris, chapter fourteen. Yeah, um, verse thirteen. It says, uh, "I'll start at thirteen. It says, now therefore set thine house in order, and yeah, you said." you know where you live in order but that's also yourself particularly starting with your mind okay of how you're gonna have to rule over your flesh the, the house of your spirit all right and reprove thy people comfort such of them as be in trouble and now renounce corruption okay let go from the mortal thoughts cast away the burdens of man put off now the weak nature Okay, now weak nature, man, and those burdens of man are usually the things of the flesh. Okay? You put those things off, man, as, as not the priority of things. Something I'm learning that, that benefits me more is, hey, man, I don't, it's not best I eat dinner until after I put my, get my lesson of the night together. Whether it's organized or I put that time in because it seems like the flesh, whether right? you, you comfort your flesh with food or whatever, Hey, now your body just wants to shut down. So that's something that I, that I'm trying to implement into my life as well. Anyway, I digress. It says, uh, verse 15, set and set aside the thoughts that are now most heavy unto thee and haste to flee from these times for yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen shall happen, 
shall happen, seen happen shall be done hereafter. Okay, so we know that hey, yeah, these times are are, are, are terrible, but they're far worse times. Man, they're still running water. There's still TV and the internet. We still have a chance to put work in. They said there's one day when, when you can't work. When 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 we will need that breakdown. We will need that 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 understanding in the moment. You know. And we won't be able to have it. We will we'll, we'll enjoy. We will wish we'll be around a brother, and we won't be able to in that time. Okay. And this is, you know, like I said, this is edifying unto me. Uh, uh, first, you know, man. So from there, let's go to. Yeah, let's go to um, Luke. Yeah, Matthew and Luke. I, I, lo I love both of those. Okay, um, Luke chapter 14. Uh, yeah, yep. Talks, talking about building the, the, the ministry there. 26 is the point. It says, if any man come to me and hate, meaning love less, his father and mother and wife, and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Hey, we don't have a priority over this ministry. You have to sacrifice, you know, we make ourselves a living sacrifice by giving up the things that we want, okay, that we want, that we think are important to us, that if they're not beneficial to the ministry, hey, we, we can't really be too deep into that. Okay, it has to be about the importance of this ministry. Okay, that's the purpose that, that we have that we've been called to do, man. This is a, a very heavy job. Okay, we have to put the focus into it. Okay, uh, go to one of Matthew right quick. Matthew 19, uh, straight to the point. Um, yeah, I go straight to the point. 29 says, And everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren, yeah, the priority is not your houses. But what does that mean? That means when you have those moments, you got to knock those things out. <coughs> okay? Jake don't have time to be sitting around, laying up, putting his feet up to, you know, getting super comfortable in this world. Okay? You know, yeah, you rest. Yeah, you have a good time. Yeah, those, those things are true. But... Always keeping, you know, on the forefront of your mind. Hey, I, I make sure I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to hit this brother up. I got to go over here. I got to take care of business. Let me do this now. Let me go to take my car to the mechanic so it don't, you know, start to rub over into the time of that I'm supposed to be at the live show or at camp or, you know, or anything like that. Okay. Uh, continuing on. It says, uh. Uh, where did it go? I'll read it again, 29. And everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Yeah. And in Second Edges, the seventh chapter, it talks about how could you um, get into the broad field if you never went through the narrow. Okay. All right, so you have to go, and you you deal with the, the 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 straight gate, if you will, the difficult path that you may get to the to the wide path, man. Okay, and and, and newsflash, you don't want to be lukewarm in this thing where you half-ass doing this thing, you know, and then you you didn't sacrifice so so much of of this world, you know, or you didn't get to do the world a hundred percent, so to speak, and then now. You didn't even do the truth 100%. Okay? To where you come up short, you, you missed out on the world, and then you get destruction. You don't even, you know, eat a missile or whatever else happens that you don't get to taste into the glory of going into the kingdom. Okay? And that's something that keeps me, you know, with fear. You know, that fear, man, that sucks. And, and when you think about it, there's nothing that this world can offer that's of greater importance than having everlasting life and receiving a hundredfold of the things that you want to 
to be able to accomplish and do in this life or in this world. Okay, most of it is rooted in wickedness in this world and in this life anyway. So it's not even a good thing to be tapped into that. All right. <clears throat> All right, from there. Oops, let's go to a couple more I think I have. Yeah, read that, read those. Let's go to... Uh, Yeah, let's go here. We'll go to John after this. This is Job chapter 33. I think I can uh, start up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, hold on, let me see. Great chapter. All right, so let's start it. Oh, wow, sheesh. Um, I'll start at one. It says, Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches, and hearken to all my words. Behold, I now... Excuse me, now I have opened my mouth, my tongue has spoken in my mouth, my words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The Spirit of the Most High, Yahweh, uh, hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty have given me life. If thou canst uh, answer me, set thy words in order before me, stand up. Behold, I am according to thy wish, in Yahweh's stead. Uh, I also am formed out of the clay. Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid, neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee. Surely thou hast spoken in mine hearing, and I have heard the voice of thy words, saying, I am clean without transgression, I am innocent, neither is there iniquity in me. Behold, he findeth occasions against me. He counteth me for his enemy. Yeah, man, you take the law in this thing, man. So what? So what, man? Yeah, like when you like one of the movies that that you know that was pretty good. When you look at the the deeper spiritual meanings, and it was Bruce Almighty, when uh, Morgan Freeman, the character of the Most High, and it came to Bruce and was like, "Yeah, you've had my powers." For a little over a week now, how many people have you helped? And what did he say? Well, I wronged a few, you know, I righted a few wrongs in my life. But basically, he went around making his life better. He didn't, he didn't help anybody with those powers. Okay, and it was taken from him. Okay, that great analogy, uh, you know, within the movie, if you can see it spiritually. All right, and then we gotta be careful. Like this, this thing ain't just a. You don't you don't gain this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding just so you can cuss out women, and use the license to have multiple wives, and then say that ah, I got I'm the king. You know that's not what this is for, man. The, the the greater thou art, the more humble thyself. Okay, the more of a servant you become to others. Okay, trying to share your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. All right. Anyway, it says, um, he put my feet in the stocks. He marketh all my paths, meaning he controls me. Okay, what I have to do, talking about the Most High. Okay, behold, in this thou art not just, I will answer thee that the Most High is greater than man. <clears throat> okay, and that's what we have to remember, man. And he wants to do us good. All right? If we, if we are obedient to, uh, to his will. All right, his will is gonna 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 be uh, more beneficial for us than anything else, especially being a, a, a child of Israel, man, and that that can see and hear this word. Hey, man, great opportunity has been opened unto you. All right, it says, uh, "Why dost thou strive against him? For he that for he giveth not account of any of his matters." For the Most High speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceive it not. Okay, you know what your calling is about. In a dream and in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, 
He openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Yeah, so what we want to do is not necessarily what we do. And, and you may think, well, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do go my own way, go my own lane, and guess what? He'll, man, he'll put you in a hospital somewhere, man. He'll humble you, okay? If you ain't willingly walking into the into his calling, all right? It says uh, that he may withdraw from, let's do Salaki, that he may no, no, verse, uh, I'll start at 15 again. In a dream and in a vision, when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumberings upon the bed, he then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Because we get all lifted up and doing, yeah, I got to accomplish this. And yeah, it's easy to, to, to do that. Yeah, I'm the best Israelite rapper out there. I'm the, you know, I'm this, I'm that. Well, that's not what this is about. This is not a, you know, a, a sports team, man. This is a, this is a ministry, okay? This is where you be your best, so the next man can prosper off of it. Another analogy in the movie that's great was um, three hundred, okay? Every man protects the other guy on his left, you know, from the from the from the thigh. To the to the shoulder or something like that, and the neck to the to the thigh or the knee or something. To the I forgot how he said it, but you're half of what you're protecting is trusting the next man to protect you, and you to protect the next man. On that side, okay. So you gotta be on point. That's why you you uh, do your best and give your your best. Not for your own personal benefit, but for the benefit of of the unit. Of the ministry, all right. It says, um, "Yep, verse uh, eighteen. He keepeth back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword." Hey, don't forget that he does all those wonderful things for you as well. Okay, yeah, life got harder when you came into this truth, but don't forget that he he's preserving you for something. Lord willing, is something beneficial and good. Okay, not for destruction, but for salvation. All right. He is chastened also with the pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. Okay, that's that's good. Um, and I'll close with, uh, I got one more. Uh, yeah. John 4. Um, rolling with that analogy from 300, right? It says, um, Let's see, um, Hester 19, we love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love the most high and hated, hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, and your brother is who makes up this ministry. So you have to love your brother like you love yourself. You want the best things for yourself, or you have to want the best things for your brother. That means you provide that standard for your brother. You 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 make yourself in your time and in, in your 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 um you know your um your resources a benefit for your brother. Okay. It says um for he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love the most high whom he have not seen? And something told me to put this um in this lesson. Um through the spirit, so yeah, I'm rolling with it. And basically, um, just to say, this ministry depri uh, deprives, uh, uh, basically puts all, or uh, 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 based upon all these men that come together that build up the ministry, which are your brethren in the faith. Okay. So, this is when you have to uh, prefer your brother, man. Has to your brother in this ministry has to now take priority in this thing over yourself. Yeah, you may be tired. And more so than your brother that you know, the, the 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 brothers that you don't know that are just waking up, they need to be edified. So we got to continue to pump this word, man. Okay, that's a that's a uh, an excellent way to truly serve your your brother by building him up through edification, which that's what the word uh, edification means to build up. 
okay? So, Lord willing, this was edifying, man. We just have to make sure that our priority is on this, this ministry and building this ministry brick by brick, putting these lessons out brick by brick, prayer by prayer, moment by moment, man. Okay, so Lord willing, this was edifying. I want to give all praises and glories unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Har HaKwadash, that belongs to the apostles and the elders and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. And greetings, salutations, blessings, and much love unto you, hopeful elect out there that have changed your life towards righteousness and sacrificing things personally that the ministry may be beneficial. Okay, um, um, that, that you may become an asset unto this ministry. All right, and with that, I close out saying Shalom.